Hi, I'm Stuart Winter, the platform architect of the Armport of Slackware. And today, it's a bit of a sad day because Pepper is going to the Arm graveyard. Well, it's more of a scrapyard, to be honest with you. Some of you may have noticed in uh, the changelog in May 2021 that har the hardware model support for the trim slice has been removed. And that's because this little fella here called Pepper it doesn't boot anymore. It still powers on, but it doesn't boot. So that means that I couldn't develop and test anything further with this. And it's a bit sad because this machine was, you know, really at the forefront of building the uh, the project, in fact, because this is where this little machine here was where the uh, the hardware floating point port or the ARM V7 port of Slackware ARM was built on. And I think what happened was um, it's a very nice machine, um, but it has no fan on it and this case got so hot, so hot in fact, that you can see, I don't know if you can see on the video, but the, the label is actually burnt. Can you see that it's actually got like a brown discoloration on it? Yeah. The machine got so hot that I think it got physically damaged during the, during the process of building the, the, the port of Slackware Arm V7. So, and in fact, it was so hot that one day I did entertain the idea of putting, a, of trying to cook an egg on top of it with a little, egg, with a little egg frying pan. But I didn't actually do that. But it really was that hot, you know. Um, so yeah, this machine doesn't boot anymore, and so I, I've removed su uh, support for this hardware model from the um, ARM V7 port of Slackware. And in fact, the company that made it, CompuLab, they were really good at working with the community. You know, they sent this for free and they were working actively with the community at the time to get the support for this into the upstream kernel that you can get from kernel.org. So, you know, hats off to that, but it's time, it's come to the end of its life. So this is the arm graveyard, the, the scrap yard here. And, you know, there's been, through the many years of building the project, there have been you know, a few casualties and a few retirements along the way, some of which are in this box. And um, that's, this is where Pepper's gonna go. We've got, um, not everything though, not everything is in here. Some of them, I had, a, I had um, a Corel Netwinder and that's gone missing. And I had a Scion um, Netbook Pro or something like that. And I couldn't find that. I think it must've got lost in a move, but we've got Wizbit. This was, uh, what is this? Oh, it's a Marvel. This is ARM v5, so this was for the ARM v5 port of Slackware, or commonly known as the software floating point. This was one of the build, the primary build machines called Wizbit. And uh, it's really good actually, I bought it because look how many ports it has. And this is cool. And not only, look, it's got loads of USB ports, it's got two gigabit ethernet ports, it's got an external, an eSATA port, it's got SM bus, I've no idea what that is actually. And there's the power supply, it's got a VGA out, it's got speaker and, um, it's got audio out and audio in. It's got an RS-232 and it's got an RS-485. I need to, never used either of those two. And it's got an SD card and it's got the um, serial adapter so you can connect it. Uh, you can manage it and um, work with it via the serial port as well. And then inside it has uh, ports for two and a half inch SATA drives as well. So the, the disc used to be physically inside of here. So I love this machine. Oh, this is brilliant, look. Anyway, it's old stuff and I don't think this boots either. I think it turns on, but it doesn't get anywhere. And we got, oh, that's not ARM. That's some, what is this? Some graphics card, that's nothing to do with ARM. That's gone, that's in the wrong box, hang on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and so we've got, What's this one? Zayden, that's another, well this is a Shiva plug. Another ARM V5 machine soft, for the software floating point port. You can see it's got one ethernet port uh, and one USB port and that's all it's got. Those are the only, oh no, it's got the, um, it's got the serial port as well and an SD card. I think that's an SD card port. But you'll see here, look, the, inside of here, it has its own transformer, its own power transformer, but it broke. All of the power supplies inside these Shiva plugs broke. They all sort of <laughs> burnt out basically. I opened them up and they were literally black. Um, so I ripped out all of those and then replaced them with something I found on eBay, which is, um, I think this is from a monitor. What is it? Uh, it's five volt DC, six amps. Oh yes, yeah, so this is a really good power supply. In fact, you know, I think I might use this for some of the v 7 stuff, which has got problems with its power supplies. Yeah. Yeah, so the reason why I don't throw most of this stuff away is because I end up recycling it over and over. It's the same with the hard disks. Most of the ARM stuff just ends up, you know, just old stuff and 
random things I got given or I picked up along the way. So yeah, I'm going to keep that because the power supply is still good. But I think the machine itself is broken. So that's Zayden. We've got Kato, which is a, a Guru plug, another Arm V5. Uh, this was a bit of a disaster though. It wasn't mine. This was um, Jim Hawkins's, uh, Jorkins's uh, Guru plug. Jim helped me with the original port of uh, Slackware to Arm, or Arm Slack as it was called back in the day. And this was his. Um, he gave this to me to help with the build process when he finished with it. But yeah, that wasn't a great machine. That was a really bad design, actually. It got so hot that it just didn't... It failed uh, for pretty much everyone. <laughs> so yeah, that was a really bad design, that one. They took, a, they took a Shiva plug and just added extra Ethernet and stuff and then kind of forgot about heat dissipation. So those were just bad machines. The, the Shiva plugs were good, though. What else is in here? Another Shiva plug. Look, got uh, Marvin. Another one. Died in the line of duty. Another Shiva plug. But again, with another external power supply. I think off eBay I bought the guy's um, entire collection of these power supplies. What else is in here? The big fat Dell power supply that I butchered up for some... Oh, this was... Oh yeah, Wizbit's power supply. Wizbit's power supply broke, so I got some old Dell... I have no idea what this was from. Some Dell thing. <laughs> Who knows what it was? Maybe a laptop ancient thing, I don't know. And I butchered that up and made that power Wizbit. Actually, again, is this any good? What is this? Outputs uh, 12 volts, 12 and a half amps. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's quite good. Yeah, I keep all this stuff. And then the only thing that's left, at least in this box, is this, which is a Samsung, well, it's a Google Chromebook. And this did actually run Slackware Arm. The only thing is, I can't show you it booting because I, I did check earlier and the SD card from which it was booting, I think that's right, let me double check that. This is another SD, ooh. There's actually, I didn't know this, I forgot, oh hang on, that's not an SD card. Oh, there's another slot there, I thought that was an SD card, but it's, a, it's got a rubber filler in there, so yeah. It used to be, there's an SD card slot here, and I booted Slackware Arm, uh, and it had this SD card projecting out, so it was kind of like, it would always, you can never really take it anywhere because it would have just got ripped off at some point. You can't have something you know, projecting out the side of your laptop. But anyway, this was a nice little machine and it was really an experimentation because I wanted to have Slackware Arm running on the laptop. And this was um, this, this Google Chromebook, whilst it's an ARM V7 machine, and it was pretty nippy actually, the, um, the problem was, well, still is really, uh, was that you, the problem with it was that it was not aimed at developers. It wasn't aimed at people, hobbyists using Linux, uh, you know, Linux distributions like Slackware, basically anything that's not Google <laughs> Chrome OS, um, it was, you have to unscrew it, you have to disassemble it, and then you had to solder something on to get it to bypass the, um, the trust mechanism or something like that. I can't quite remember the details. But, you know, um, I did actually try that and I couldn't I didn't succeed in bypassing that. I, I could have tried it a bit harder, I suppose. But I figured that I'm not going to go and document, you know, I'm not going to document the process of physically dismantling your, your Chromebook and soldering something on just to uh, bypass the trust mechanism. Because the other option was every time it booted into, Goo, into Chrome OS to some degree or to some stage, and then you had to do a key combination to boot off of SD or something. It was, it was like, you know, it wasn't something that Let's say this, there'd be a lot of friction in order just to get Slackware running on here and it wasn't worth it. But it was a fun experiment and it worked. So that's what we've got in the, in the, in the box and um, we're going to carefully lay Pepper to rest. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what, I was wondering to myself, like, what, what, what was this? And I remembered, I was going to unscrew it for you, but I don't have the um, sort of, I've forgotten the name of these, but like the, the sort of star shaped uh, screws. I haven't got them up here, so I can't, uh, I can't dismantle it. But basically, in the, in the box, this thing was, um, it was a dual core ARM Cortex A9. It was one gigahertz, had one gig of RAM, and a SATA SSD, blah, 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 some Wi-Fi and some other stuff. So it was a good little machine. And inside the box was, um, in the box, right, that's a USB extender cable. We'll use that for charging the, uh, the iPhones in the house, actually. Keep that. Um, so the Wi-Fi, I, I think I must have disconnected it from inside, but on here, what, what it came with originally was, a, was this, which is a micro SSD. Well, it's, well, it's an SSD uh, um, drive, and it's 32 gigabytes. And this was what used to be 
physically inside of the trim slice. So inside there it was connected, it would have been there I suppose, inside there it was connected up and that's what what Pepper ran on, it ran on, you know, its operating system was installed on this and ran on it for years. But then eventually this got burnt out and started failing. So I pulled it out and plugged in a in an adapter and then plugged an SSD on the outside. So I had an SSD drive um, uh, connected to Pepper and, and the power, you know, must be connected in there as well. And I've just, I'm not quite exactly sure what I did here. I think I disconnected the Wi-Fi so I could put the cables through the through the hole in, in the case and, and keep the case on. But yeah, really good machine, and it and it was responsible for for um, so yeah, really good machine, and it was what the Arm V7 hardware floating point port was built on. So much respect, and we're going to lay it to rest now. I might come back at some point if I ever run out of adapters and I'll cannibalise it and take some stuff off it. So let's lay it to rest in there. Put all of this stuff back. definitely come back for these power supplies later. I need those for the Arm V7 machines actually because the really cheap power supplies, these little really flimsy black ones you get, they, they tend not to last very long. All right, let's put that in there. Now, so Pepper is now laid to rest. That's as much as the funeral arrangements go, I'm afraid. Now, however, come over here and I'll show you some other stuff. Now, as I was making the arrangements to lay Pepper to rest, I saw uh, all of the other stuff that's here. Now this is some, this is, like the, this is like the museum. This is the museum section and that's the sort of graveyard come scrap section underneath there. And um, let's put that there. So this here is one of the original build machines for Slackware Arm or Arm Slack as it was called back then. So this is, a, this is an Acorn Strong Arm Wrist PC and it's one of the original build machines for Slackware Arm, or uh, Arm Slack as it was called. The other one Darren Austin has, uh, I'm not really sure why he wanted it, but I gave it to him. And Darren runs the slackware.uk uh, mirror service. And this still powers on even today and it must be 18 years old. The only thing is with it that the, I don't have any monitors that can display the output because it has a you need those multi-sync monitors you know like NEC multi-sync that have that very you know that can support various different um, uh, monitor frequencies and unfortunately today's LED well this isn't today's this is quite old actually so this is the this is the museum of old kit but uh, particularly this old this old dog back there and this old dog here is a is a monochrome monitor and I did I did connect this to here yesterday just to see if it would work but it didn't because this supports even less I think than the L than the LCD screens but yeah, it still powers on. I just can't see anything. So unfortunately, I can't show you the, you the original arm slack on here. Oh, well, I can show you inside though. Come and have a look at this. Oh goodness. It's a little bit dusty, but um, I'll show you what's in here. One of the cool things about this, which is why I loved it so much. And, and in fact, this one's, what's this one called? Stokely. Oh yeah, the, yeah. So Zayden, the one that I gave Darren, actually had more keyers on it. So what, what was so cool about it? What? Is that a wine thing? It looks like a wine from this side. Oh, this? Like a wine bottle. Oh, so like, I mean, can you see that in shot? Glass. Yeah. This, oh, yeah, this is a picture of a wine glass and it means fragile. So, oh. so basically when, when people, when the delivery companies, um, you know, move it around, you know, when, when, it's, when the logistics companies move it, the idea is that they take care of this because hard drives are fragile. If you drop them, they get ruined pretty much. Well, yeah, they definitely get ruined if you drop them. Um, particularly if they're spinning, they get even more in. I don't think you normally see that on hard drives these days. So this is a very old hard drive. What is it, 15.3 gigabytes. Yeah, so one of the really cool things about this machine was that, and notice as well the power supply, it's got a pass-through. Who doesn't like pass-throughs in their power supplies? The really cool thing about this is that it's a multi-tier system, right? So you could buy additional tiers and basically make an enormous machine. Like some of these wrist PCs were like this tall and I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. So I got these and if you come up, can you, uh, I, you know what, I can dismount, I can take this off because um, it doesn't even power on anyway anymore. So you can see it's got, well no, it does power on, it just doesn't, I can't get a signal from it. But um, So you see in here, it's got like the CD drive, it's got uh, an IDE based, is it IDE? Yeah, it's got an IDE CD drive. It's got a wrap ID or wrap or whatever they called it from Yellowstone. And again, Jim Hawkins that originally 
helped me with the project, he was the one that hacked the kernel module together uh, to support this thing, because there, there was one, and it came, but it was in NetBSD, and then he ported it over and, and made it into a kernel module for Linux. Jim and I uh, submitted the, uh, the the kernel module for this to Russell King, who was the uh, who's the ARM kernel maintainer for Linux, and um, and, he, and he and he said, but the license is a BSD license. We can't include it in the kernel. And we're like, oh, <laughs> oh well, <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so yeah, so it's got an IDE card here. It's also got a SCSI card, a Paratech SCSI card, and it's got an Ethernet port. So I'm showing you this, uh, apart from the fact that it's. I just like this machine, I think it's cool. This is why, to me, ARM is not embedded, right? ARM uh, here is the strong ARM CPU. Hang on, let's see if I can get this out without breaking it, hang on. Because I've done it many times, but not for about 20 years, there we go. So this, can you see that? Yeah. This is a strong ARM, uh, this is a strong arm CPU and it was clocked at, uh, I think it says two, yeah, 200 on here. Although I think this one was actually 233 megahertz. So this is the actual, you know, this is quite funny because if you look at say, oh, I don't have an open board, an arm board, but you know, if you look at say the arm boards these days, like the Rock Pro 64 isn't much bigger than this, right? If the, the, the actual board is pretty much this size. It was arm V3, this one. And now, ARCH64 is ARM V8. So just to give you an idea of the generations of ARM. So yeah, so this one was either 200 or 233 megahertz and I overclocked it to 287. If you look here, can you get, can you zoom in on that, these in between these um, pins? Yeah. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but the scratch or gouge marks in the middle, can you see? Yeah. That's me with a, with a knife. So what you had to do I don't think I'd ever do this these days, but I took my really expensive, this is well over a thousand pounds, this this machine here, well over a thousand. And I took um, I took some advice from someone who worked at ARM at the time, and you could overclock these, these CPUs to 287 megahertz, and all you had to do was get a scalpel, sever these tracks on the board, and then, and it made these dip switches active, so you could uh, flick them and then you could change the clock speed of the CPU. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever go around these days cutting that, but I was really keen on getting this machine as fast as possible because it was building Slackware and that took a, <laughs> that took quite a long time back then, I can assure you. Let's put that back in there. But yeah, just to give you an idea, you know, this is like, this is a desktop machine. And, um, and that's where, to me, that's what ARM is all about. It's not about embedded stuff. And that's also why Slackware ARM has always been but, you know, it's always been, and that's why Slackware Arm has always been focused on desktop use cases and server use cases because that's what I did. You know, this is a. I was always this was this was originally my main um, computer. It's what I did my university work on. It's what I did, kind of well everything in fact. Web browsing, you name it, it went on here. So yeah, I can't boot this one for you, but what I can do, well, quite like to do. If anyone's got any really old um, VGA monitors, <laughs> let me know, particularly if they're near London. I'd quite like to have one when I come back and I can pick it up. So, now what I can show you though, is this bad boy. This is a Castle Ionix, and this is called Zippo. Now this one is an... Um, Wait, did you call it Zippo? Yeah, I called it Zippo. Originally the project was called Armslack, before it was the official port of Slackware and I had that domain name and so all the machines had labels on so I knew what they were. Need a coffee now. Now this machine is a Castle Ionix and it's also a desktop machine and it's like the next generation of this. It's made by a different company but it still uses, um, it's an ARM machine in there and uh, it's, it runs RISCOS, the same as this, but a newer version of RISCOS uh, natively. So it has a native operating system called RISCOS. Um, so, you know, it's, it, this, this is actually a standard PC case with an ARM board inside. In fact, this machine still boots and it runs ARM Slack. I turned it on yesterday and I was really surprised to find that it still worked. Hold on, I'm about to pull the cables out. Oh, that's huge. You can see it. Yeah, yeah, it's really heavy. Yikes, it's really heavy, this case. So you can see it's just a standard PC case. Look, it's got 
uh, mic, you know, all the, all the standard peripherals um, from back in the day. It's got USB on a PCI bus, I think, and VGA as well. But I'll quickly open it up for you and show you what it's, what it's like. Because you'll see, this is might be quite shocking to some of you who are, particularly who are new to ARM, what actually is in here. Because Now, yeah, I appreciate it's a little bit dusty, but it has been like closed for about 12 years or something. It's not big. <laughs> it's a little bit dusty. Yeah, so this is, as you can see, it's a normal PC case, normal power supply. It says Pentium 4 ready, in fact. God, that, that tells its age, doesn't it? Um, I think it's got one gig of RAM, just normal RAM in there. I uh, don't know what type of RAM it was, but SD RAM. Oh, I thought it had a gig. Hmm. Yeah, it is. It's got, got one gig of RAM in there, one, one physical stick of RAM. Um, it's got a bit of dust in there. And I've got a couple of hard drives, and I don't know if you can see here. Let's use my phone for a bit of light. So you can see here. So that's your X scale CPU. And um, I can't remember honestly which version of ARM it is actually at this point in time, um, but it's an Intel X scale. So you know when you look you, when you're used to system on chip, these little ARM boards, this is not a system on chip at all. This is a full machine with PCI slots um, and an ARM CPU in there and a couple of hard drives uh, running off of IDE, I guess. Yeah, an IDE. So I'll put this back together and show you it booting up. Okay, I've reassembled this and uh, plugged it onto another monitor. I turned it on yesterday, as I said, and now I reassembled it and couldn't get it to have any output on the monitor. So I thought perhaps this one would have to go under the table, but fortunately I've plugged it into this other monitor and it's working. So if you just come over to the screen, you'll see it boot up. Hopefully it gets a signal. Let me just press that and see if it works. Oh, there we go. Acorn ADFS. Yep. So it's risk off. It's got one gig of RAM. It's just booting. It's, uh, it's just booting the operating system at the moment. So this is RISCOS, and um, you can see the only thing I was using this machine for was Slackware. So let's open it up. So we've got a little directory here called ARM Slack. And to do... That looks so old. Oh, it looks old. It's very old. This is... Uh, not sure what... Yeah. So yeah, we've got the Slackware ARM installer. And don't want to do that, but I've got the... What's that in there? Grub. Oh yeah, there's Grub. That was when, oh, can you, oh yeah, I'm remembering how to use RISCOS, isn't that amazing? What's this? Yeah, so that was when I started experimenting with Grub on RISCOS. And then Slack Boot, look, it's even got its own little uh, sprite there. Where's the sprites? Oops. Yeah, look, I made uh, sprites for it. Not sure we can make them bigger though. A little, can you zoom in on the sprites? This is what I was telling you about with, with games, where you have sprites for the icons, they're called sprites. And this is a sprite editor that it had as part of the operating system. So you could design your own sprites. So I've got a little t uh, Linux Tux penguin there with an arm written over it. So yeah, that's that. And then it had Linux loader inside of there. What's this? And this is the script that runs it. Can you see that on the screen? So yeah, look at that. 30th of May, 2004. That's when I last touched this and set some kernel parameters there. Yeah, and you can see I'm setting the kernel parameters here, like some things never change, huh? Slash dev SB, sdb2, and then it loads the kernel, uh, it runs the bootloader, and then it passes it the kernel as a parameter. It passes some parameters via the kernel proc uh, command line interface. And it, oh wow, so I was, even, I was even telling you, even back in 2004, I was instructing Slackware ARM to know what the system was. So let's boot Slackware on the Ionix. So here we are. Uh, it's got one CPU according to that and it's kind of gone off the screen. Uh, how do you how do you re auto adjust? How do you actually I like that I guess. And what that, is that how you do it? Oh there we go, yeah. So you can auto adjust it. So yeah it's booting. What do we have here? Linux 2.4 so it's a custom branch of the kernel. In fact, uh, Peter Knowles was maintaining this. He was one of the guys that brought, um, that was heavily involved in Debian on ARM at the time. And he was the one who got this working on the Ionix.
Okay, so it's booted. Let's log in as root. There we go. So, um, yeah, you can see I logged into it uh, recently. I did that yesterday. Um, see, if I remember rightly, this only had... So, yeah, only half a gig of RAM was available in Linux for some reason. I can't remember why, but it's actually a gig uh, physically in there. And what is this machine? Oh, okay, yeah, so it's a... Arm V5, okay, yeah. So, and it's Linux 2.4.22. Yeah. X scale. Okay. Right, so, hang on. What I'm gonna do now is log in as my pleb user. Okay. So I'm going to start X and see if that works. I think I've got X working on this. Did that just say something about president? I don't know what that said. No, it definitely didn't say anything about presidents and football coaches. No, it did say something about football coach. <laughs> oh, that, oh, oh when, when, on the screen you mean, in black yeah. and white? Oh, that's the BSD Games package in Slackware. So if you, when you do a full installation of Slackware, it includes a package called BSD Games, and it's got a, um, a, a tool in there called Fortune Cookies. And it's like if you go to those Chinese restaurants and you open up, I forgot what, what they are, but you, um, do you remember Short Circuit 2 and they're stuck inside the, the fridge? Yeah. And then and then they they keep opening these things and it keeps like you know your your happiness is about to increase or something and they're, they're, they're frozen to death. Well, those are fortune cookies and on the little bits of paper and it has this package that does the same thing. So when you log in, it gives you a different message every time from a huge array of of, of fortune cookie messages. That's what that was there. So it's it's random every time. You never know what you're going to get. Um. So I think that this. So yeah, clearly X works. Um. I think this is FWVM. I can't remember how to use it to be honest. Uh, TWM, the window manager. So this is absolutely ancient. Um, I wonder if, if we had Firefox. Well, the package is installed. I wonder if it works. I honestly don't remember how far I got with this. I mean, it's been a long, long time. Certainly, I wouldn't expect Firefox to load uh, particularly quickly. But... Um, Let's see. While it does that, let's see if we can... Because I've got the network on this. I think it's got active network. Oh, you... Yeah. Oh. Oh, hold on. Let's, um... So there's another one of those. Oh, 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 hang on. Bon Echo. Oh, right. Okay, so it was some kind of version. Oh, that rings a bell. I think I had to have loads of patches for Firefox because they wouldn't do I can't remember but it, but yeah this is basically Firefox with but they called it it was called Bon Echo um, and I think it's something to do with distribution rights or something I can't remember it's been too long but yeah but that, that's that's Firefox but it's not working because I need an IP and I haven't got an IP oh I do but it's on the wrong network hang on Oh yeah, okay. Oh, how do I get that behind there? Um, let's see if we can get an IP, a new IP. Oh, where's the output? Oh, must be a really old, really old version of DHCP, I think. Oh, there we go. Let's try this. So this is like probably one of the worst things. Well, <laughs> it doesn't matter too much on this case. This is absolutely ancient, but I'm going to... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to arm.slackware.com because that's my website. So I know, I know, that, I know what's on that website. Let's see if it works. It does indeed, and because the ARM Slackware website is, it's, it's the um, the website design isn't exactly new, and so it seems to render reasonably well. Actually, uh, it it manages to stand the test of time. <laughs> oh yay! Hang on, how do you resize this? It doesn't seem to. Ah, oh. okay. Well, okay. Anyway, it's a little yeah. As you can see, it's not entirely responsive, but it's not bad. Look, just paging through like that, it's it's not too bad. I mean. Oh, got something broken there. Better fix that. But um, yeah, so I had Firefox running on there. And yeah, I mean, this is I got really far with this. And this is what I was using as a desktop. And that's been always the plan, is to have Slackware ARM used as a desktop. Uh, so, so it's pretty cool. Um, 
Yeah, I'm quite impressed with that actually. I mean, this is how, which version, you know what, the question is, of course, yeah, I'm not used to using this window manager. I wonder if, I think even, you know, I'm absolutely certain we even had KDE running on here. Let's see which version of Slackware this is. Oh, wow. So it's ARM Slack, oh wow, okay, I used to have different versions for ARM Slack back then. So this was ARM Slack version one, and it was Slackware version 11.0. So that is pretty old, but I wonder whether we could, do we have X, if, do we have KDE? Oh, we do, look at that. But it started X, it started TWM. Okay, so it's got, hang on. Oh, hang on, no, that's because, why is it started TWM? Why is it started TWM? Let's, let's kill this, boom. So I've changed the xinit rc sim link to point to xfce, so I can give that a go. So let's try opening up xfce. See what happens there. I've no idea. This was a build machine, so the build machines are in all all sorts of states. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, that didn't work. What's going on here? Error loading shared object. Oh. Okay. Oh, he got the wrong key mark there. Oh, right, okay, there's some, yeah, the, the KD, the XFCE package is messed up. But, um, what is in here, anyway? Okay, I don't, yeah. So, yeah, I did have KDE. This is an absolutely ancient build machine from, you know, back in the day. So it doesn't kind of surprise me that some of it doesn't work. But, yeah, that's Zippo. So this, this machine... And we can, it still works. And in fact, we can um, so look, we can from here. I can log. I can log into one of the Rock Pro sixty fours. So the um, what's this doing? There we go. And Dastardly has just finished building Linux five point ten point thirty nine. First, does that say look like dog? Dog, yeah. Dastardly has just finished building the kernel for ARCH sixty four, the latest one at the time of this video. Uh, with some enhancements I've just made to the uh, to the installation process. So yeah, you know, this machine is still usable as a front end to more recent ARM devices. So, all right, so I'm gonna make sure I power off the right one. Yep, cause to make sure I have accidentally in my time powered down the wrong machine, <laughs> but not this time. So I hope you've enjoyed indulging my uh, trip down memory lane and seeing the machines that died in the line of duty and those that have been retired and uh yeah i'll see you in the next video cheers bye